This is Tales from the Ridge. Ballad of Billy Leone. I'm a bounty hunter. Billy Leone rolled his shoulders and the reflection in the mirror did the same. With a quick motion, he shifted the white wide-brimmed hat so that it rested at a more jaunty angle. I'm a bounty hunter. He narrowed his eyes this time, tilting his body just slightly to the side as he drew his shock pistol and aimed. I'm a bounty hunter. He adjusted, tweaked and repeated hoping to find the magical combination of bravado and body language that would make him feel a bit more prepared. With a deep sigh, he sank into the helm chair of the Concord. Billy glowered at the mirror, achieving the first real intimidating expression of the evening, fully aware that it was directed at himself. What are you doing, Billy Leone? He slapped his hands to his cheeks and pulled down, drawing his skin tight as a thin groan left his lips. The transistor on the dash lit up and began to crackle with life. Billy! said a garbled voice. Billy, come in! Billy spun the helm chair and snapped on the communicator. I'm here. We found her. Three words, simple as that. Three words that sent equal measure terror and triumph shooting through his veins. He sprang up from the helm chair and slipped a flask of soybean whiskey into his tan duster before checking the charge on his shock pistol. Satisfied, Billy slammed his fist against the button that raised the blast door and stepped out onto the red dirt of planet Messier 1. Billy tilted his chin down into the range of his communicator. Where are you? Tombstone, said the crackle of the radio. A stale wind whipped ochre dust across the road as he made his way into town, quickly swallowed up by neon signs and crowds of sentience that all seemed to be moving contradictory to one another. He ducked beneath a piece of rebar being carried casually across the wide shoulders of a four-armed jontar, just in time to bump into the exoskeleton of a califera, arguing loudly with a merchant in its chittering language. The hanging sign of Tombstone Saloon barely flickered with light, a few of its letters left up to the imagination. Billy pushed past the swinging doors and entered the dim interior, already feeling grimier than he had moments before on the street. His eyes nervously scanned the bar, searching for the face that matched the voice on his communicator. She waved him down from a corner of the room, almost hidden by the wood paneling of the booth. He sidestepped as a glass of liquor shot past him, exploding into a thousand shards of wet glass against the wall. Two humans went rolling out of the saloon, tangled together in a confusing mass of flying fists. Despite all the ruckus, he arrived at the booth unharmed, slinking down into the worn velour seat beside the rest of the crew. So, where is she? he asked. We got wind that she was contracted to move a valuable herd from Toussaint to Clear Creek, said Jebediah, his furred vox ears twitching with excitement. She'll be passing through this evening, followed up Lark, tossing her wild red curls over her shoulder and leaning over the edge of the table. Billy blinked and glanced away from the sight of her freckled bosom as it peeked through the wide collar of her flannel, his visible discomfort drawing a knowing smirk from the human woman. Do we know whereabouts? Billy questioned, turning his head to glance at Sus, the imposing female jontar who took up most of the booth with her four arms. Not far, said the large lizard woman. The herd will be passing through Grotto Gulch tonight, Lark added languidly, taking the last swallow of whatever brown swill she was drinking. Guess we better be ready and waiting then, huh? Billy gave a sly grin. 
It's an hour's walk to the gulch. We could take the Concord, said Jebediah, tapping the claws of his paw-like hands against the table. You know the rule, Jeb, Billy growled. Sus chuckled, the sound like an avalanche of rock as she stood to her full and impressive height of seven feet. No fly. Not unless we're going off planet. I know, I know. Jebediah grumbled as he pushed himself out of the booth, leaving Lark and Billy alone for a moment. What's with you and flying, eh? Lark observed, her eyes twinkling with amusement. I like my feet on the ground, Billy said as he shakily stood. That, and we're out of gas. Lark laughed to herself and slipped past him, leaving a scent of lemon in the air as she moved out onto the street. The crew made their way to the edge of town, passing by porches that yawed too far to one side, and a traveling snake oil salesman pitching glowing blue cure-all to a half-interested crowd of sentients. Arches and pillars of red-stained rock loomed up above them ominously as the crew left the dregs of civilization, their feet kicking up clouds of rusty dust that clung to every fiber of cloth. For the first thirty clicks, Sus sang loudly in the gruff sounds of her unintelligible language. Jebediah took up where she left off, regaling them all with a long, drawn-out story from his nomadic days that could have spared a few of its more unbelievable details. "'Are they always this lively?' Lark asked, not yet used to the tedious shenanigans of Billy's comrades. "'You get used to it,' Billy offered his condolences with a smile." Lark arched one eyebrow, but did not retort as the group slowed, approaching the lip of Grotto Gulch. Billy stared down into the dimly lit chasm with shifting eyes. His duster fluttered against his knees as a ripe gust of wind swirled upward from the depths of the grotto. He took a step back and lifted his bandana over his mouth, taking a deep breath of filtered air as the macro fibers tightened over his nose and chin. The rest of the crew did the same. Jebediah, get to the east end. That's where she'll be coming through first. Make the signal when you've got her in your sights, ordered Billy as the Vox nodded and took off in a run toward the opposite end of the gulch. And me? asked Sus, crossing all four arms over her chest. I want you to stay up here. Lark and I will go down into the gulch and cut them off. Then, when the moment is opportune, you will join us from above. That's sure to be a surprise. The three of them shared a cackle before Billy nodded to Lark and the two humans moved to the western edge of the chasm to make their descent. The air that greeted them was thick and moist, swallowing them up as if they had been dropped into a stinky, primordial soup. I don't like this at all, Lark said, her voice muffled by the black paisley bandana hugging her mouth. I cannot disagree, Billy replied. The floor of the gulch was wide and smooth the stone remnants of what had once been an acidic riverbed. Nature had repurposed it in the years since. Along the walls, starting at eye level, grew hundreds of thousands of glowing fungi of several varieties. Some were as big as a man, with caps large enough to double as bathtubs. The smaller kinds were multitudinous, shining out from crevice and crack like so many stars. Throughout the air, glittering spores danced like fireflies. The only sound was the clack of boot heels against the hard rock beneath their feet. It's beautiful, Billy said as he knelt to hide behind one of the larger mushrooms. I'll give it that. In the way that something could probably kill you is impressive, I suppose, Lark admitted as she sat beside him. Sus would probably eat them, Billy said with a grin hidden by his bandana. Lark laughed. Wouldn't want to be there the next morning, though. Billy snorted at that and caught Lark's gaze as it flitted over him. The two of them shared an awkward silence, during which the woman casually probed the fungus they were hiding behind with the barrel of her pistol. So, Billy started, 
not having any idea of where that sentence was leading. You haven't been with the crew very long. I don't know much about you. Lark did not look up from her inspection of the mushroom. Ain't much to say. Well, that's not much of a conversation, Billy nudged. Who says I want to converse? She shot back. Besides, you're my boss. The less you know about me, the better. I ain't your boss. Just the guy that collects the contracts, Billy continued, undeterred. Don't see many other humans this far out. Lark leaned back on her hands and fixed him in the intensity of her icy blue gaze. Why do you care? she asked. Billy took his hat off and set it on the top of one bent knee, running his hand through his dark, thick locks, as was his habit when nervous. I just like to know the people I'm supposed to... Well, it's it's easier... Ah, forget it. He slammed his hat back on his head and leaned against the rock at his back, letting the brim slide over his eyes to rest on his nose. You trying to get with me, Billy Leone? Lark teased. Billy sat up so fast he collided with the cap of the mushroom, sending a handful of glowing spores into the air. Readjusting his hat, he cleared his throat. I would never, uh, imply such a... Well, it's not, uh... Lark was observing him over the rim of her bandana, one thick brow arched in curiosity. There was another long silence neither of them deigned to fill. You ever been with anyone before? Lark's voice was sly and quiet. Billy stared upward, his eyes following the dancing motes of fungus. Nah. Lark's brow puzzled a bit in surprise as she glanced away. I find that hard to believe, she said softly. Billy cleared his throat. Uh, you, you, you do? Lark nodded. You're not overly handsome, but you ain't ugly neither. That's all it takes for most folks. Billy licked his lips. To be honest, Billy fought the urge to shut his trap and keep this information to himself. I've never met anyone who who I felt like I wanted to get to know well enough to um want that. Lark's head tilted to one side in curiosity as she toyed with the bolo tie around her neck. But you're interested enough in me. Her voice was genuine for once. Billy let out a long sigh. I I think so. Her nose wrinkled and he fumbled for a better answer. I don't mean it like you ain't worth it, Lark. Uh, Pete's sake, it's just hard to know my own self and my predilections. Lark shuffled a few pebbles at her feet distractedly. Why you out here in the boonies hunting bounties? Billy fished for his flask and took a long sip of cheap whiskey. Nothing better to do. Nothing better to do, so you just happen to decide to take on the biggest, baddest gunslinger in the galaxy. Billy shrugged. I want to get us off this godforsaken rock. He waved a spore out of his face. Fuel's expensive. This job was offering enough to get out of the atmosphere and then some. Lark pondered this information with a distant expression that hinted upon deep-seated empathy. Heads up, came the hiss of Jebediah's voice. Billy sprang up and dashed across the chasm to hide directly opposite of Lark. Both humans stared fixedly at the murky eastern end of the gulch. At first there was no movement. Then the ground beneath them began to shake. Pebbles jumped into the air as if suddenly alive, and mushrooms shook their caps in rhythmic tremors. Lark glanced across the wide, smooth floor of the chasm, meeting Billy's gaze with fearful eyes, and then nodded. Billy turned and began to climb, making it about six feet off the ground before he could go no further. His fingers already stung with the effort of maintaining their grip on thin crevices, the muscles in his arms cramping in complaint. Great horned heads of cattle burst onto the scene, their lowing, thunderous, yellow eyes glowing eerily as their six-hooved feet rushed over the stone riverbed. Messier herds were notoriously skittish, which is why they were being moved by trail and not via carrier in the first place. This bunch seemed to have got themselves riled up for a stampede. Billy groaned. 
this was not part of the plan. Billy! Lark yelled. I don't know how much longer I can hold on. Billy shifted slightly, looking over his shoulder. Lark had one hand clasped to an outcropping of rock. The other was searching for a hold, her feet slipping over the slick cap of a mushroom. Before he could answer, the roar of an engine joined the cacophonous noise of the spooked cattle. The headlights of a hoss blinded Billy as he looked back toward the eastern end of the gulch. bike was maneuvering with expert ease around a feral horn and hoof alike. The rider pulled back on the handlebars and revved the engine, propelling the bike up and over the cattle. In the same moment, Lark let out a scream as her hand slipped and she fell onto the large mushroom beneath her feet. Lark! Billy screeched. The mushroom, unused to such weight, bent at the root dangling both itself and Lark upside down over the deadly-looking horns of the stampeding herd. Her weapons slipped from their holsters and clattered to the ground where they were quickly crushed in an explosion of sparks. The hoss and rider had made it to the other end of the gulch, and Billy tore his eyes away from Lark's precarious situation just in time to see the bike swerve to the side. The rider was siding along the lead cattle. With a quick motion, they drew their shock pistol and shot bright blue bullets at the animal's feet. The cattle turned out of the way of the fire and tried to maneuver away, colliding with the other cattle, who then began to turn as well, until the entire herd began to slow for lack of space. The rider moved their hoss carefully through the center of the recently calmed animals, heading to the spot where Lark still wavered on the thin tether of a fungus. The rider parked the bike and dismounted as Billy slipped quietly down the side of the gulch, taking in the mysterious stranger from the safety of a hiding place. Cattle shuffled by him, their wet noses snorting for breath. You seem to be in a bit of a precarious situation, the rider called up to Lark. Lark blinked her watery eyes, hair swaying beneath her. I'm fine. The rider placed both hands on their hips, and Billy took in their ensemble all black from the Stetson on their head to the boots on their feet. Now, ma'am, no need to be cavalier about this. New riders began to appear from the other end of the gulch, headlights dancing across the dim chasm and its glowing fauna. Soon, Lark was surrounded by purring hover bikes and curious onlookers, five in total when you included the rider in black. Tack, would you assist the lady? The rider indicated to one of the crew, a jontar with bright yellow scales. Tack descended from her bike and plucked Lark from the cap of the mushroom as if she were a flower and not a fully grown woman. Lark, to her credit, tried to dash away immediately, but was halted by one massive clawed hand. Now, now, the rider in all black chided. I don't believe for a minute you just happened to find yourself dangling above this expensive herd of cattle. You gonna admit what you were here for? Lark's lips twisted ruefully and she spit at the rider's feet. Now, that was not very polite, said the stranger dangerously. Billy glanced up. Sus and Jebediah were staring woefully over the edge of the gulch, wearing matching expressions of trepidation. Billy lifted one finger to his lip and motioned at them to get out of sight. The two sentients nodded and disappeared just as Billy stepped out of hiding. Let her go! Two of the posse turned and fixed him in the sights of matching rifles. Billy raised his hands instantly. She's only here on my orders. It's me you want, he said more confidently. Well, there you are incorrect, my friend, said the rider. I don't want either of you. Which one of you is Cash? Billy asked, his knees trembling. You're not in a position to be asking questions, said one of the rustlers, his rifle nudging Billy in the shoulder. The rider in black slowly approached, spurs jingling like tiny bells as their boots clacked against the smooth canyon floor. 
For the first time, Billy noticed the dark ebon skin above their bright red bandana and the long black braids that descended from beneath their stetson. You, he said a little ashamed of the breathless whisper, you're Cash Guthrie, the woman in black. And you are? asked Cash, one hand resting on the shock pistol in her holster. Uh, Billy Leone, Billy said after clearing his throat. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a bounty hunter. That sent a ripple of laughter through Cash's crew, and Billy tentatively lowered his aching arms. Who put a hit out on you this time, Cash? asked one of the humans. Hell if I know, Cash growled back good-naturedly. This herd is stolen, Lark hissed. Y'all are no better than rustlers. Now that's a matter of opinion, darling, Cash intoned. By my count, we're returning property to its rightful owner. Lark paled and clasped her lips shut in a tight line. Cash turned back to Billy and assessed him with amused brown eyes. You're new to this, ain't you, kid? Billy hesitated, then nodded quickly. Cash hummed in her throat. Thought so. There was a pause. Want my advice? Billy didn't answer. Cash took that as a yes. Maybe don't go for the biggest bounty right off the bat. Work your way up to bringing in the most notorious gunslinger in the galaxy. Who's that? piped up one of her troop. You know damn well who, Boone McCreary, and it ain't you. Cash shouted without glancing back, sending another loud ripple of laughter through her crew. Cash turned to the jauntar holding Lark. Let her go. Lark shook off the lizard-like hand on her shoulder and moved to Billy's side. The herd was well on its way out of the gulch by this time, the cattle moving at a gentle pace out onto the wider plateau beyond. "'Stay out of my way, kid,' said Cash with a nod of her hat before swinging back up into the saddle of her hoss. The bike roared to life as she slipped her spurs into the dual ignitions, warm air spewing dust and pebbles to either side of its glowing undercarriage. The rest of her crew did the same, and soon Billy and Lark were staring westward toward the end of Grotto Gulch as red taillights disappeared into the cloud of spores. Lark and Billy stood in silence for a long while, each equally lost in their ruminations on what had just happened. I kinda like the sound of that, Billy said finally. Lark glanced at him, brow furrowed. The sound of what? Billy the Kid. He responded with a small grin, eyes locked to the place where Cash's hoss had disappeared. Lark shook her head, eyes rolling. Well, now what? She asked with a hint of exasperation. Billy turned and tentatively reached for her shoulders. How about I take you out to dinner? Lark's eyebrows shot up to her hairline. I don't know quite what to say to that. You could say yes, Billy teased. Lark gave a soft laugh. All right, then. Yes. But? But? Billy prodded. Can we go somewhere other than Tombstone? That place is dirtier than the bottom of my boot. Billy gave a loud laugh that echoed down the gulch. With a gentle motion, he tucked one of her errant red curls back behind her ear and nodded. Deal. for listening to the first episode of Tales from the Ridge. If you couldn't tell, we're pretty new to this, so we appreciate every listener. If you like the story of Billy and his crew, check out my Wattpad for a story called Gunslingers and Galaxies, which features Cash and a full-fledged book of her own. Tune in next month for a whole new episode of Tales from the Ridge, and next week when we launch our other podcast, 1,000 Furs and Other Tales, which is a collection of LGBTQ plus fairy tales. P.S. Thanks for listening. Nice to be in orbit.